you are watching Excess LaPorte County Channel 97. Coming up next is the January 26th, 2023 meeting of the Michigan City Housing Authority Board of Commissioners. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportcounty.org. It is 303. I'm calling this meeting to order. Can everybody rise for the pledge? Ms. Mooney, can you lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Uh, roll call. Miss Rodney McCormick. Present. Michael Vincent. Present. Stacy Benning. Present. Kenneth Fly. Talani Reyna. Present. And Jacob Mahoney. Present. Okay. We have quorum. Yes, we do. Okay. Next. Uh, next is the approval of the minutes. Approval of the minutes for the special board meeting December 22nd, 22, and regular board meeting on December 29th, 22. Are there any questions? Any discussion? Were these sent out beforehand? And I missed it? Yeah. Okay, I missed the email. Yes, she sent the email out. Okay. Yes. I missed it. I apologize. Mm -hmm. I will entertain a motion. Motion to accept minutes for uh, December 22nd and 29th. Do we have a second? Um, or a second, sorry. On the roll call, Ms. Hutton. Rodney McCormick. Aye. Michael Vincent. Aye. Stacey Benning. Aye. Kenneth Clark. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Talani Reyna. Aye. And Jacob Mahoney. Aye. Mooney here. Mooney here. Oh. <laughs> I am so sorry. Maybe I need to put my glasses on. <laughs> Next. Okay. Um, Any communications? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, direct report. Wait, wait, Miss Miss Hutton, we're gonna go with uh, finance report. I'm gonna just briefly state, okay. if I may. Um, in the order of transparency, it, I think it's irresponsible for us to continue to function in this fa in this fashion. And I um, hope that you can work with Mr. Uh, Harris and finding somebody that can temporarily step in as an interim um, director for finance so we can have somebody here delivering that report. Okay. That's my recommendation. Okay. Would you have a problem with that, Mr. Harris? No. Thank you. Okay. Okay, direct report. Okay, um, the number of move-ins, uh, we had none. Uh, the move-outs we had um, were two. The total vacancies we have at this time is 34. Uh, we're at 84% in collecting our uh, rents, and uh, we had 12 research this month. Um, maintenance work orders this month, we had a total of 36. Um, security incidents, we had one which is also in your um, notebooks and customer complaints, we had to. Also, um, we have new staff and our staff will be going to training. Um, one of my staff members is actually on training at this time. Um, they will be certified at the end of these trainings. Uh, also, if you look in your uh, back of your book, I have training dates for uh, the commissioners as well as
set. So um, I'll be waiting for responses from the commissioners on what trainings you would like to go to. Um, uh, the different ones is NARO, FADA, and then NAILROD. NAILROD is the last one I just put in there. And that one's at ba in Vegas, which is in April. If I like to, I might like to add something to that. Those who have been going to training, that's fine. Those who have not been to training, it's a must that you do at least one one training so you can get an understanding of all the stuff that's going on. So we won't be in the dark when we sit here. We got to be able to perform our duty. So me and the attorney will encourage everyone to please. You have to do. We need you to do the training at some course at some point. And if you look at the nail rod training. Um, for commissioners, um, theirs is April 19th, and it has roles and responsibility, conducting effective meetings, bylaws, what they are and why you need them, public housing re repositioning, board evaluations of executive director's performance, and building an effective partnership commissioner and executive director and the strategic planning and the strategic planning process. It's in two points. Mr. Commissioner, if I can make a, a question. Yes, you may, Mr. Vincent. Uh, is, there, is there a specific or a preferred line of training? I mean, I know there's been training offered in, in the past in my line of work that is a phone book full of training <laughs> and other than just going through and just picking one just for the sake of getting a training under your belt is there like a, a line of training that you would recommend for commissioners new never had training to take yes yeah. uh, i think there there is a, you probably can say the same thing but naro i think is probably the preferred like that's choice a and it's n-a-h-r-o and when you are looking for the specific um, training to do, it would be geared towards commissioners. So it'll it'll have that in the title. Right. And there's the commissioner's training. Yeah. And FADA is next. FADA and that, is next. So that's and right. that has commissioners training too. Mm -hmm. And just like I was reading, Nelrod, Nelrod has they're they're broken up. And mm -hmm. at Nelrod, they're broken up for commissioners, executives, HCV, public housing, maintenance in general. So not to take up a lot of time at this meeting, they're listed in no specific order. Is there a, a process like you should take this first? There's a 101, 102, 1. Just the commissioner's training. There's a basic commissioner training first, and then there are others after that. I would get that first commissioner's training out of the way first. Uh, depending on where, where it falls, ideally NARO would be the one you do first, but you don't have to. I mean, you can do whatever one comes up next. The sooner you can get the training, though, the better. Um, there is a commissioner's handbook that NARO publishes. Probably would be a good idea for you to order that for all of them. No, I have We have oh, that oh, okay. yeah, third good. edition. Great. Yes. That's the start. So when you do the NARO training for commissioners, they review what's included in the book that directs yes. already gave. So okay. you know, very good. Track. Thank you. Yes. And I just want to add something to that because I've been doing several trainings now. To me, it's very important that you do in person. I will stay away, me personally, I will stay away from Zoom, um, the Zoom feeds and all that. I just go directly to a live training because you can interact with people that's just like us. Mm -hmm. that in the, that's in the same boat that we are in. And, um, and you'll bond some, you'll make some friendships and you'll, you'll learn if this is what you really want to do, you know. Um, I don't think the boards, no other boards will have as much education or training as we have had. As soon as we get you, the rest of the guys, the rest of the ladies and gentlemen, to get on board to do the training. So yeah. try to do live, please. Um, as you all know, that um, December thirty first ended our contract with South Bend, and so I would like to thank South Bend Housing Authority for helping us, assisting us with our Section Eight program. At this time, we do have a Section Eight. Uh, manager uh, Angie Cooper, Angie May Cooper. Uh, she's the new Section 8 manager, and so we've been moving pretty good along in Section 8 at this time. 
Any discussion? Just like I to ask a question. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. You can go ahead. Um, is there a need for us to continue with the, even a short-term contract with South Bend, or, or or we past the point that they can help us? Right now, there is no need, but uh, South Bend have. If Angie has any question, they have been available to still assist. Okay. Yes. Next, Miss uh, Penny, do you have any questions for the director? No. Mr. Harris, do you have any questions for the director? I don't. I think that is the right course of action right now. There's not a need of staff on board. As the need arises, I know in representing South Bend, too, that they're always willing to help, and they're in direct communication with Director Hudson. So. That's right. Any questions for him? No, I don't. Mr. Mooneyham. I do have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, you have 34 vacancies. Yes. Um, are we going to fill those? Or um, what is the plan for that? Yeah, we're going to... Um, get together and work out a plan with the property manager and maintenance. Um, the worst units we normally contract out to a contractor, which will go for bid um, when we do that. Uh, but um, the ones that maintenance can do, um, they normally work on those. But out the 34, uh, okay. I know mostly all or maybe two in Mary Hill we're going to have to contract with because it's going to be a lot of expensive work. But we are also waiting on the PNA to be. Okay. So, okay, so once the short goes out, we'll go to the bidding process. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Mm Harden, -hmm. you said you had, we have uh, 36 open work orders, correct? No. They closed. Do we have do we have any more do we have any other open work orders? Um, have they all been fulfilled? I think Brittany is to give it Let's say everybody aside from a late interruption, probably two minutes later. Yes. Brittany, um, could you um, give the report on the work orders? Yeah. Um, so with this is the work orders that were completed within the month of December. So it's a total of 36 that were completed. Average days that it took was about 13.52. Um, at the end, if you look where it says build, the $30 at the very top would be a lockout charge. And you would have to go and unlock the unit for the tenant to get them in. Um, other than that, that's all I have. Do you have any questions? We have no open work orders right now. I'm not saying that. This is the work work for just December, what was completed in December. There are some that are open. However, they're only open because I may not have been able to get into the computer to close them. Do you have a number that you may think that is open? Um, no more than 100. It could be very well less, but like I said, I'm for one person up at this front desk and I have to go and close them out. So they could just be completed, just not closed out. So there's a big difference in a, you know, a line between completed and not closed out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Fly. All right, how you doing? Uh, just a question as you're speaking about the work orders. Um, you know, we was extremely real, real bad down in work orders. Them 2,000 some work orders, maybe even 1,500, even if it was 1,000. Did those get it fixed or we just beat them out the system? Well, when I started in April, at the end of April, it took me about a month, and I closed out what I had on my desk. I filed them and put them away, and we were nowhere near 2,000. Well, what you mean? said file. I'm talking about the work orders mean work needs to be done, not filed away. There, well, that's what I'm trying to explain. There wasn't 2,000 or Okay, 10, well, well, whatever it was, I'm asking. Commissioner Fly, you have to allow oh, them to answer the question. Hold on, bro. You have to ask me up about that. What I'm saying is, um, well, you, no matter what you did with them, I'm saying had to wasn't work, wasn't work, work orders fulfilled. They started to file away. That's okay, that's, that's what I was trying to say. Yes, I closed them out in the system. But what was done, what labor was used, what material used, and inventory. I've also been in the process of updating our inventory and our assets. And if they were done on the work order, then I completed them and I closed them out. But like I said, they can be completed and not just closed out in the system. So you can't really go with what's open or incomplete on the work order because it could very well be have completed. But there's a process. Like if there's a water heater, I have to log it in the asset system. Then I have to do a purchase order and a requisition for the water heater. And then I have to assign it to that unit. 
So it's more than just the work order. There's inventory, there's the labor, the assets, all of that. So it's more than just close out the work order. So. Thank you. Is there any other questions for Ms. Brittany, please? Anyone? Any other discussion? No. It's on the uh, agenda. Um, attorney report. Attorney's report. So we've got something that we're going to cover a little bit later on in the agenda, and that's the approval of the bylaws. I think that's one of the most significant things that we've done since our yes. last meeting. Everyone had an opportunity to review them um, and comment, ask questions, etc. So I think what we're doing is kind of reviewing all the, the various areas of uh, the agency where the board has authority and needs to make some corrections uh, or some adjustments, and this is the first step. You got to start with your bylaws. So I think I applaud the board for its efforts in doing that. And when we get to the appropriate place on the agenda, we'll go ahead and get those adopted and move on from there. Any discussion for the attorney? Hearing none. Thanks on the agenda. Uh, staff reports. And those reports are in the package. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any question about the staff report that maybe yeah. Ms. Hutton can answer? Hearing now next on the agenda, Ms. Hutton. Um, subcommittee report. I got a subcommittee. I don't want to skip it. Oh, got those? Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, that's why we, we have to skip if it wasn't on. Uh, subcommittee, we um, end up getting a hold of Comcast finally, the lady Miss Asia. She finally got back in touch with us when I first told everyone that uh, they was waiting on us. And then we waited a long time to get back with them because I didn't know the crew, you know, the uh, amount of people and where the locations were at and what, how much people was on the service. So Miss Asia was had COVID and so she was out a couple months. But immediately when she came back, Apologize to me. A lot of emails me and Miss Hutton and actually they came from way from Chicago to meet us personally because they did some, you know, she made a full presentation. Like that. And so that was a, look at there. Look at the girl right there. There she go. Hey, hey, uh, yeah, see, there we go. We got it going on. So we got it going on. You talk to her again. Yeah, uh, they're going to, on the unfinished business. They're going to do their presentation. Oh, that's a good thing. Next on the next on the agenda, Next is new business, new business approval of MCHA commissioner's bylaws. Uh, attorney Harris. Yes. So included in your board packet are the new commissioner bylaws. Uh, they were amended after obviously uh, some recommendations that that I made. We incorporated some things. For example, uh, the remote meeting policy that you adopted, it's referenced in the bylaws. Uh, there was some concerns regarding nepotism, and those are reflected in the bylaws. And so we just up, we gave them a re we gave them a refresh and updated them based upon all the comments. Uh, there were also some suggestions from HUD in terms of uh, the need for new bylaws. Uh, now, I know they provided us with some recommended bylaws. That's not the, the format that we went with. We just drafted our own from scratch, uh, and this is what it is. So I'd recommend approval. Discussion. I make a motion that we um, that we approve the bylaws. Second. Ms. Hutton on the roll call. Rodney McCormick. Aye. Michael Vincent. Aye. Stacy Benny. Aye. Kenneth Fly. Yay. Salani Rayner. Uh -huh. And Jacob Mooneyhan. 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 Um, All in favor? It was six. six we are passing the bylaws around for everybody to sign so we can get that step over with. Um, next. next on there is photos. Um, you go. I can go with mine. Um, all the commissioners, we will be scheduling photos that will be taken by Mr. Uh, Harman. By Kevin, Mr. Harmon, will take the photos for us. Um, they will be added to the Michigan City website. They will be added to the Michigan City website under our name and our the, um, the time um, where our the uh, our term expired. So that is a must. I'm not going to. We we got to get it done. 
and we will start on that next week and hopefully we we get it all over with and done and post it as soon as possible that's my part of it really okay and uh, we do have the ID machine and so the staff and everyone I'm passing around the ID that we will start next week making sure that the staff have their ID and then the following week hopefully we will get you commissioners in to get you all. That's pretty. And everyone, every all the staff, everyone will get photos, including Mr. Harris. All of us will have photos and we will be on the page. And I think that's um, the right thing to do. We need the public to know. They need to be able to put a face to all of this all the time when they look us up. Um, one of the things I need for discussion is next week what will be a good time for people to come in or do you just want, prefer for us to call you? It's your pleasure to take the photo. It would only take, Mr. Harmon, how long will it take to uh, do the, Mr. Harris has to sign it. How long will it take for us to get the photos over with as far as the board members? Probably a minute per person. I don't know, it should take long. I mean, I, I just want to make sure I can set the backdrop up where we're location is convenient and where wants to come and I'll snap them and be done with it. Did you get shots? Yes. Yes. Okay. Can, can uh, will noon work for you? Is noon a good time for you? On most days, yeah. Uh, unless I have a meeting scheduled for alcohol. So you mean the group photo or individual? In individual. Do you want a group as well as individual? No, we just want the individuals. Okay. Yeah, I can handle that. Yeah. Okay. If we can get that done at a lunchtime, and you tell us a time next week. We'll email it out and give everybody one day notice, or at least two day notice. Okay. So they can come in and just take their Probably phone. The one o'clock slot would be better for them. Okay. okay. All right. Here you go. Signed by laws. Next on the agenda. Uh, the locate the green for <clears throat> homicide homes. That's what that says. All right. I am going to. Um, this is kind of touchy for me, but uh, as we know, Harborside Homes was tore down at the request of Blue Chip. Um, there was some kind of agreement that went out um, early 2000s. Um, this, um, we don't know where we at with that agreement. We feel that um, if there is an agreement, we don't think it's being fulfilled on what we should have gotten in return for giving up um, 122 units and that land down there. We want to know where we at with this. Do we know what year this would have been in? 97. <laughs> And who the parties would have been? The city of Michigan City, HUD, and this Norm, housing authority. Norma Thomas would be the ED. Was it Norma? I think it was Miss Miss no. Novell. It was. I think it was Miss Novell. Norma in '97. '97. Why well, haven't opened up? I'm not sure when they. So about Miss Gaston? No, I think it was Miss Miss. Anyway, we need to we need to find this agreement. We need to find out the terms of this agreement. Um, the sooner, the better. Um, I believe that um, I'm not going to speculate on it. I just want to. We just want. I think it's in the best interest of our tenants and the rest of the people here that need housing to find out why we didn't get the 122 units replaced. I don't see anybody being an ED will make a deal that will take away units and not give back anything. That doesn't make sense. So there's a. I can comment on that. Yes. There's a safeguard that's in place generally to avoid that from happening. I don't know what happened either, right? Of course, yes. none of us were here then. But any public housing authority that owns property in its name, um, there is a, a declaration of trust associated with the property. Um, and you'll hear DOT, you know, the acronym for it. But whenever you're going to sell publicly owned property, or in particular public housing authority property, you've got to get a release of that declaration of trust from HUD. So whenever you're disposing of property, there is a what's called a demo dispo application that you've got to file with HUD, and then there's eventually a declaration of trust that has to be released, and the declaration of trust is an encumbrance on the title, like a lien, and you can't transfer ownership of that title at least the proper way without getting a release of that lien because it's still clouded, the title's still clouded. Um, the next owner would have issues with doing whatever they're gonna do with it. If they're gonna finance it or sell it to a, yet another party, that declaration of trust should pop up 
just like when you're buying a house and there's some issues with it, same idea. Um, so the safeguard that's in place is for HUD to review that transaction before they agree to release the DOT on the property. So there is, there are, should be records related to this. We should be able to find it. And if something were to have happened, it had to have happened with HUD's approval. So it'll be interesting to see what the whole history of all this is. With that being said, is there any other discussion with about this? I will entertain a motion to uh, from anyone who that, that will allow Mr. Harris to use all the resources he has to locate this agreement and see if if it's see what the terms of that agreement is and bring it back to the board. So I will entertain a motion. I motion uh, Attorney Harris will sign the paperwork for HUD concerning uh properties in Arborside. Second. Is that a proper motion, Mr. Yeah, yes. Do you understand the direction? I do. Okay, we have a second, Ms. Hutton. Rodney McCormick? Aye. Michael Benson? Aye. Stacey Benning? Aye. Kenneth Fly? Aye. Talani Reyna? Aye. And Jacob Mooneyhan? Aye. This has been a long time coming. I want to thank each one of you commissioners. Uh, 122 units disappearing and we didn't get nothing in return. Just doesn't sound like it was a, don't sound good to me. So next on the agenda, Ms. Hutton. Uh, the agenda is the pending items. Uh, the first thing is the snow removal contract. Uh, I think everyone was sent out the snow removal contract. Are there any discussions regarding the contract? Is there anything you want to add, Mr. Harris? No, uh, just based upon the process that we went through after okay. that, um, I spoke mm -hmm. with the contractor and drafted an appropriate contract based upon in the rates that he quoted. Uh, and the contract adequately protects the interest of the agency. It requires them to have the adequate amount of insurance, and I'd recommend approval. Any discussion? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion. Make a motion to um, accept the snow removal contract at this time. So moved. Just heading on the roll call. Okay. Brighton McCormick? Aye. Michael Vincent? Aye. Stacey Benny? Aye. Kenneth Fly? Yeah. Talani Reyna? Aye. And Jacob Mooney Hands? Six to zero. Ms. Hutton, I move that we um, take that off the pending item list at this time. Okay. Do not add it, remove. Uh, next thing is the security contract recommendation. <clears throat> Here you go. Mm -hmm. As we know, we all um, have discussed the, the security situation. Um, one of the things I did while I was at training, uh, Ms. Hutton um, sent out an email to Mr. Corley to determine um, if he was bonded or had any insurance. At that time, um, no, he does not, and he doesn't even have um, his own private uh, company. Um, at this time, um, I'd just like to entertain a motion to accept Stark's security to start as soon as we get our our physical need assessment back immediately at that point in time because we will be doing repairs at that time and I think it's important that we secure any work that we're doing so it won't get tore back up and we get people in it so that's my anyone else discussion please feel free uh, discussion free for you. feel free uh, just a question for attorney mm -hmm. what a security force need to be bonded as a whole or individual bonded? Is Generally it's both. Um, the company as a whole needs to be insured and in order for them to make sure that there's no issue with the insurance, each individual security officer would go through a screening process to make sure there's not any issue there because of the nature of their work. Um, I can tell you uh, there was a, a situation in, with another housing authority that there was a, a, a problem between a security officer and a tenant that lived there they were dating and it created an issue so there is a process on an ongoing basis where they have to screen these individuals that are working there to make sure there's no conflicts of interest that they don't have any convictions because as time goes on you may have a you know crime that's committed it can be a crime of dishonesty or a violent crime um, and they need to make sure that they're insured and bonded so that everyone's safe. So, so that, that rule would apply to uh, 
police officers working off duty? Police officers fall into a different category altogether. Um, they are covered by Nate by virtue of the fact that they are you know sworn police officers, so it's a little bit different standard. But there is protection that's in place because they're a governmental entity. So it, it puts the city on the hook for any liability as well when they're police officers. Now, if they're working off duty, that's a different story. Yes, they would have the same requirement. I would like to add something. When Mr. Corley was here, he made it clear he is not representing the Michigan City Police Department. He made that absolutely clear. And he did not come in uniform. Um, he gave us his presentation off the cuff, and we greatly appreciated that. Um, that's all I want to add to that. Point. Yeah, they're private now. I, I want to make sure we're clear on that. If they're with the police department, that's a governmental entity and there's protections there. There's even immunity there. Yes. Um, but if we're talking about someone who's off duty, that's just like us. That's just a private citizen off the street. Mr. Fly? Yes, I want to say with the security with Mr. Mr. Corley, I think he probably could have did a good job by the security, but if you don't have the insurance, we got to hold them in the same standards we hold anybody else that comes to work for the housing authority with slow fires having proper insurance. Now, this is a consideration of Mr. Corley being an um, officer down here and uh, I guess hiring four other officers, but since he's going to be a solo firm of his own, that would be somebody in, um, engaged with his, I guess, uh, security firm. And with that being said, there's no way possible we can, we can possibly uh, consider Mr. Corley under any circumstance because Mr. Vincent, what we have to do is hold him like you went so diligently into Mr. Vin uh, Harris. You know, and he and he only had uh, he only had uh, what he had a uh, uh, SR twenty two. So, so what I'm saying is that we have to use the same accountability, whether it's our police or anyone else yes. on the insurance side. We have to cover ourselves, especially with security. So it ain't no mark against Marty, police officers or anything. It's just about going down the line, crossing our T's, dotting our I's, so we can get it behind us and keep it moving. Anyone else with discussion for the attorney? Go ahead. When you reached out to him and he said he didn't have insurance, did he express any interest in getting or doing so? You have to ask me. She was me. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, the reason Marty doesn't have insurance is because he's an employee. He's not a contractor. He's an employee on my payroll. Okay. Employee with who? Michigan City Housing Authority. Okay. Mr. Harris was that. Um, being an employee so I don't know what the arrangement would what's intended by that so he's he's in he's budgeted as a security officer for the housing authority and he's an employee he's an employee and he alone would be responsible for security for the whole agency at this time it was more than one more than one employee yeah when I first got here it was so I mean now now it's just it's down to one well, I guess before we even get to the insurance question, which no, to answer the question, no, we wouldn't be required to have insurance as an employee. The agency would need to make sure that it's adequately insured and has that security as part of the scope of what they do. Uh, but I don't know how one person can handle all the security for the agency anyway. Well, he only does here in um, Lakeland and States, and he does it certain hours uh, at night and in the morning too. It's just I don't know how you have that kind of yeah. coverage. One person having that kind of coverage at multiple sites, I don't know how you do it. Yeah, Mr. Fly. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Mr. Fly. I was going to say uh, when you say that at both sites all together is no more than 11 hours a week. So right. he ain't really too too doing too, too much. Right. <laughs> That's Miss Ben. 11 hours is what he right. Any other discussion? And I'm sorry. Um, also, he wanted to add the other officers as an employee and at this time <laughs> our budget cannot take Absolutely. three to yeah. four more at forty dollars an hour right. um when you do it as a contract i can get the money from another pot Understood. and not an operation pot you know <clears throat> to use as a contractor and so that the issue with this so please forgive me. Um, I got ahead of myself. So at this time, I will ask Ms. Hutton what will be her recommendation, our attorney, and then we'll move appropriately. So what will be your recommendation, Ms. Hutton? My recommendation is for us to uh, proceed with STAR um, security firm. And um, 
no more than 60 days, I think we said. Mm -hmm. Agreed. To, uh, Mr. Harris, what's your recommendation? I agree with that recommendation. Good job. I will entertain a motion. I motion that I start. Mm -hmm. I'll start. Second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Good okay. job, my son. Uh, Rodney McCormick. Aye. Michael Vincent. Aye. Stacy Benny. Aye. Kenneth Fly. Yay. Talani Rainey. Aye. Uh, Jacob Mooney. Aye. This contract will not, forgive me, will not take place right away. Um, we have to make sure Ms. Mr. Uh, Harris has a chance to see all the paperwork mm -hmm. and then we'll move at that point in time um, to go ahead and move forward with that because we will start doing repairs to Lakeland Estates as soon as possible because that uh, physical needs assessment should be coming back so, any day. Yeah. Okay. So just if I can add to that, so once we are ready, uh, I can review the contract and then um, Ms. Hutton can issue a notice to proceed to them whenever it is, it's, you know, whenever that time comes. No, okay. She, Next, Penny uh, item list. Uh, we already discussed the board ID and employee ID. Did we talk about the card, board ID card? Yeah, yeah we, we passed it. The business card? Oh, no, the business cards. Oh. Okay, uh -huh. I gave all the commissioners a business card, and I just want to make sure um, the information you want on your card, which is um, Michigan City email, or phone number, if you want a phone number on it, is the number or, the, or information you want on your card. If it's something different, mm. then please let me know. Yes, I like, like the change. The or, if it's going to be written in the card, I, oh, like, yeah. I like the or, the MC or that. Uh, oh, you want the other? Yeah, if okay. you're going to have it like that, I'd rather okay. have the or than my yeah. personal. We'll yeah. finish that after the, um, after this is over with. Uh, like next on the agenda. Okay, next on the agenda is to remove the TA report. I will entertain a motion to remove the TA report. He did, re he sh he did show up and gave, a, gave his presentation. Um, it was a gentleman workshop. from Oklahoma. Yeah, the workshop. Mm -hmm. So I will entertain a motion to remove that from the opinion item list. So moved. Okay. Need a second. Second, let's know. Oh. Okay, uh, Rodney McCormick. Aye. Michael Vincent. Aye. Stacey Benny. Aye. Kenneth Fly. Aye. Talani Rainey. Aye. Jacob Mooneyham. Aye. Six to zero. Okay, the next thing is Comcast for the residents, and we have a presentation from Comcast. Okay. Do they need our screen? Do you need screen and stuff in? Um, so I didn't send it to you. Yeah, and I put it in a, I put oh. the, I did put in your packet a copy of the proposal. It is under uh, pending items. It's right after the first pending item sheet and it says prepare and it, and then after that, it has this. this. Buster. Okay. <laughs> this is her. Hi, Asia. Hi. Good to see you again. Good to see you. So, um, we came, I came a couple weeks ago to talk to you all about getting uh, our service to the residents here. And um, so the question was could we get hot spots and feed off of the internet that's already existing in this building? And the short answer is no, that would not work. But we did come up with a solution that would provide your residents with quality, reliable, high-speed internet. Um, so from what we were able to gather, there are 11 physical units on the property. And um, you would require 13 modems in order to provide service to every resident in your uh, establishment. So it would be two modems in the larger, the longer buildings, and then one modem each in the smaller buildings. Okay. So the speed that that would come with would be 250 megabytes per second upload, I'm sorry, download, and 25 megabytes per second upload. Um, this will come with the ability to um, manage the equipment and um, control your own Wi-Fi network name, password, and security as well. 
Now, um, there are a couple of different ways we can go about this. We have the unified program, which would be uh, 13 units, and um, it would be $164.90 each, which would be $2,143.70 monthly. And then we also have the other, where it's uh, nine plus two units, which would run 14.29.45. I'm sorry, 19.93.90 monthly, and the install would be 14.29.45. Now, um, what kind of questions do you have about that proposal? I would like to ask a question from Ms. Talani. Ms. Talani, um, what was that quote you were talking about? That, uh, wasn't it worth now you ten thousand per month type deal? Well, I, I now have two, so I know that. Um, I'm sorry, hey, I'm just trying to get yeah. some numbers right quick. Two, um, well, let me see what he was going to do. But I have, because I also two went back to the IT process about the house costs and everything. So, but when it came down to the first quote that they gave me, yeah, it was. Uh, this was through Comcast. This was $10,906.65 a month. Okay, we got one beat. Plus, anybody else request? Oh, what person name you continue? I just wanted to make sure that 10000 you know, we weighed down to fourteen now. In the thousands, not even into the two thousands, and then when we did go uh, on our own to get, get uh, coverage or whatever, they kind of speculated us way out there with that range. So I think we're doing really good uh, below two thousand dollars a month getting all units in in that service. I don't think that comes no better, but it's only talking me up to the president and Miss uh, Hutton. It's up to this board. Record. Yeah, it's up to this board. Um, qu question is, do we have to use your modems? So, um, for, what, hey, Eric, they want to do So, you do have the ability to use your own if you want to. The, what we find is that every modem has a filter in some way, shape, or form that clogs down the bandwidth that gets thrown into the modem itself. Mm -hmm. um, you can certainly explore it. That does include the modem, that does include static IP, so therefore people that are managing the network from here can connect to the Wi Fi access points remotely. Of course, the access points, that connection would be on an IT vendor to bring in for you guys. But essentially, you're not you're removing the need to have additional technology inside the units. So the more technology that you guys provide, the more breakage points versus if kind of, let's say, there was a power surge, that modem goes out, that's what you guys should replace versus saying, hey, Comcast, my modem's gone. Can you please replace it for us? Mm -hmm. We do that at no charge. Yes, you can certainly do that. It's a $20 cost savings per unit or per account that you would have set up. But in the end, for the connectivity piece, I think it's vital to have those there because now there's a seamless transition besides that we can provide to get access remotely what you guys need from the Wi-Fi mm -hmm. capabilities, the, uh, the security measures that you want to put in for content and whatnot. It just removes a variable out of that side of that equation. Okay, the internet service that we have here, is that included in the price, or that's separate? That's separate. That's separate. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I did not look into rebundling the program that you already have in this building. So that that's something we can go into as well to see what the total cost would be for out there and in here. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I think we we initially said don't mess with our building. Yeah. Just go. Yes. So that wasn't on you. Yeah. Yes, I understand that. But we're paying the internet service here now. And I don't understand, I mean, why would we pay two internet service? If that building right there, that building right here, or that house right there could get internet, we should be able to get the same internet for no yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so whatever programs and pricing that we have for new connects, we can bring that to this building as well too. So, I mean, the, are, you, are you talking about like taking the internet that's here and pushing it over there? That's what the goal was. Okay, so I thought it was good. I I personally thought it was going to be less cheaper. I mean, less expensive if we went that way. So, in the grand scheme, it could be. So let, I, I'm just going to spit a shoot from the hip and just give an example. So if we were to bring in a a, a fiber server, right? And let's say we call it two gigs over two gigs. Let's say the amount is three thousand dollars. We're bringing it to this building by itself. We're not building the infrastructure up to those buildings. 
that would be on your IT vendor, I think it's Chester, correct? Yes. That you would go to them and say, hey, I need a quote to run 11 fiber circuits from this build, fiber lines from this building to those buildings to connect to this network. I don't know what the construction cost of that would look like. Right. But again, that's how you do it. Do aerial, point to point, underground. That's a lot of one-time cost to work in it. Versus something like this would give you a much, let's say the work is $100,000. Well, if you're sitting at four fifteen hundred dollars a month conservatively times thirty six months times twenty four months, your your that cost is covered over the course of ten years essentially. Yeah. And com and at that point, if there's any buildings on this property that Comcast has to build to, Comcast is eating that construction cost. Right. Not right. The housing authority. Yeah. I'm going to allow Miss Raina. Do you have uh, any questions for Comcast while they're here? Since she was on that subcommittee as well. Right. No, because I didn't really necessarily deal with Comcast at all. I simply dealt with their IT department. Okay. So the numbers that I have are simply from the IT department. Okay. Any other questions? Mr. Housing Authority is the ownership of the... So if, if something goes wrong, you come out and you fix it. Modem goes bad or whatever. Modem gets damaged by home a resident. That's different. Is that so correct? The, the way that I understood in the conversation that I had with Ms. Hunt was that there is a storage, some type of right. non customer right. accessed room in each building. Right. Okay. So the idea would be for Comcast to put the modem there. You reach out to your IT vendor to say, hey, we need a managed access point. Managed access point plugs into the back of the modem, stays in that room, broadcasts Wi Fi. Mm -hmm. Resident doesn't even touch it. They just, it's at a, a login password? How that would be for your IT department to decide how you want to do that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Do You're good. Thank you. Vending on sale bed. Any other discussion? No. So, um, oh, hold on one second. Mr. Mooney, out. Uh, for Comcast, I see 24 <laughs> month terms. Is that the only option? Um, we do have 24 month contracts. Uh, Thirty-six months is another term, but the price actually usually increases. Okay. What about 12? We don't have 12 months for this specific plan right now, but Comcast is very flexible when it comes to contracts and if you need to break them and things like that, you would just work with me and I would make sure that helps you. Plus the 12 month terms are more expensive. So, you can see each month. Any other questions, Mr. Um, yeah, one more. On this proposal, I'm seeing 13 sites at 120. Lawrence the static IT, and then other figures multiplied by 13 as well. Nope. Uh, which slide are you looking at? Are you referring to the uh, the 9 plus 2? No, no, he's referring to the first sheet that um, Asia sent me, okay. which was. Um, when I asked you for it earlier. So, 11. It, this one. The very first one. one. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, the very first one. Uh -huh. So, you saying which one? Which so one? In my understanding, mm -hmm. there's, there's 13 sites. Mm -hmm. There's this internet at 220. Yes. You multiply it by 13? Yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did it add up one? Uh, my brother, is that enough? <laughs> is that enough? The um, why business internet for residents? So, because the buildings are technically owned by the housing authority, it's technically a business. Mm. If we went, if we went to residents, it would be it needs to be in the resident's name instead of the, the business entity, and then they would be liable for all those charges. And then we'd only be able right. to support one unit. So right. Every resident mm -hmm. would need a box. I know the business package, package you've been calling a lot of people out there too, so well, I think that's probably good sure. to consider the business. Yes. Uh, Mr. Hare, I mean, Mr. Vincent. I have a question for the board. In specific. When we first started talking about this, it was for the kids being home, e-learning days. We were concerned about the children getting connected to Internet. Not only that, we also was concerned about these residents having access to the new world. It's a new world. Not well, the Internet. Yeah, I understand that. But every adult I know has a smartphone. 
and they not typically have unlimited data. Out these doors, there ain't not one of these old people got no smartphone or some of them. They they probably barely got a flip flow. Not everybody been sent. I'm sorry, Mr. Vincent. Go ahead. <laughs> nope. I I was just. <laughs> I know that I know this quote was for these buildings. Right. Yes. So is this a build on for the occupied units with children that we're concerned about? Uh, no, I can answer that. Let me yeah. answer that. So when we, they can go with internet essentials. Right. They can get the nine dollar plan. Yeah, and when they get done doing the, yeah. whatever it is, it ends, it ends up being free for them. So here yeah, we don't have some. Yes, here we yeah. don't have kids here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are adults. You don't have any kids here or families. And this was so correct. They can get their uh -huh. free pretty much through compact okay. plan they got. Right. All right. Yes. So um, I, we're not going to entertain a motion on any of this today. We just want to make sure everybody um, heard this. Um, Ms. Reyna and Mr. Fly have been working on this, and Ms. Ms. Hutton, and we just want to, um, if we have to call a workshop, that's what I will do because we do have to get this decision either yay or nay. So I'll be looking forward. Oh, go ahead, Ms. Hutton. I'm sorry. Uh, we have. Um this Comcast is one component. Mm -hmm. The other component I have to get is IIT mm -hmm. because I have to find out what the cost would to install and run the lines oh. so we would know the total cost of this. But this is just the beginning of what Comcast is going to. Miss Asia? I just want to add that um, I'm happy to look at the account here. If you guys would allow me to, so that we can see if there is anything, any changes to make, to make that more affordable with, you know, both bills combined. Our director, she will reach out. You guys have each other's information. That will be fine. Okay. Um, at this point in time, I say that we put this on um, a schedule uh, within 10 days for a workshop. And see what the what you have for the IT person. I like to meet the IT person for once. And, and um, there's no need for us doing this without him, without listening to him. Doesn't sound feasible. So can we get that scheduled for a workshop uh, when he, when he's available? Okay. All right. Next on the agenda. And we're gonna leave that. We're gonna leave the internet on the penny penny nine list as well. Okay. What's on the agenda? Locations of meetings. That has been on the agenda for quite a while now. Um, I will, um, I'm, I'm not for moving our meetings right now because we don't have that many people that come to our meetings right now. Mm -hmm. And I don't want the staff to be inconvenient and, and interfere with the day-to-day -day operations. So I will entertain a motion um, either way. So either for or against. I'll I make a motion that we knock that. We don't accept moving the um, location because uh, it's remote privy to this location. Even some residents, when they want to come to the board meeting and, and speak out against them or speak about what's going on, they're more closer here, it's right in their back neighborhood. There's no seat, no need of filling City Hall up over and over. I've been, I'm on four different boards there. I'm, I'm tired of City Hall, okay? So we can't have any, any more discussion, Mr. Vincent. No, that's a motion to remove from the yeah, end no, of I suck it. Well, we're gonna, we either gonna stay here or we're not. That's the motion. That's oh, the motion. Stay here, <laughs> suck it. All right. <laughs> 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 right, Mr. Foreman. Aye. Michael Vincent. Aye. Stacy Benning. Aye. Kenneth Fly. Yeah, yeah. Talani Rayner. Aye. And Jacob Mooneyham. Aye. And we will remove that from the penny item list as well. Uh, workshop with the auditor. I gotta go. I gotta go for the uh, chairman. Yes. And Everybody, board members. Bye bye. Okay. Where are we at with the um, workshop? Workshop. I have um, reached out to the auditor. I've emailed him and I've called him. At this time, he has not uh, responded. Um, as you know, we previously had him set and we had to cancel because of conflicts with some of the commissioners. So at this time, I'm waiting on him to respond back and give me a date when we can call a workshop. <laughs> Go ahead, Mrs. Is this is this the audit that for for our last fiscal yes. period? Twenty twenty one. Okay. It, does the auditor need us to have a workshop, or does the auditor come in, do the audit, and then give the report of the audit afterwards? Go ahead, Ms. Okay, um, 
What happened is the auditor, in his contract, he is supposed to tell you, the board, what is in the audit. And uh, we had set up a time, but not everyone could be there, and so the board canceled. So right now, I'm trying to reschedule that meeting. Is that a meeting that we need all board members to be present, or just quorum? Just a quorum. Okay. Yeah. I think it's, I think we need to talk to the auditor. Um, there's no doubt we do. Um, I think um, any other discussion. Yes. I'm sorry if I'm jumping. Mr. Mooneyham? Ms. Reyna? No. Ms. Benny? No. Mr. Vincent? Who is the auditor? Uh, Velma Butler and Company. From they're, where? They're located in Illinois. So they will be coming all the way from Illinois? Mm-hmm. All right. Have we called around to local? I, I know there's several CPA and auditing firms here in Michigan City. Okay. Um, yeah. When I got here in 2019, mm -hmm. uh, the previous director used the local uh, auditor. And the problem with housing authority, you need an auditor with housing experience because HUD regulations are different than normal reg government regulations. They're not the same. And so you need to know exactly what their um, deadline's in. you got to get it in because we lose points as a housing authority if these deadlines are not made. And what happened with using a local that didn't know anything about housing, we missed the deadline. We didn't get it in in time. And if when you do all of that combined, we get zero points. And we get scored on it. And zero points in financial puts you in trouble. How are we looking with uh, Velma Butler then? Uh, Velma Butler, they have our got first. They got it in time. We passed with no problems. And I predict the one, they'll be doing it. They had a two year contract. They'll be doing it again in June. Our deadline is June 30th. So they'll be doing 2022, June 30th. It's got to be in by June. Yes. Okay. All right. And, and uh, what I will do next board meeting, I will give you all the dates of like the financial deadlines dates that they have on the HUD website. And I'll put it in the packet so everyone will be aware of these. Those will be deadlines, correct? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vincent, and I know I asked for this at, at another board, but. Were you able to locate any of the management letters from previous audits? You mean the management letter or the agreement? You mean the what goes in the audit and it says management part of the audit? Because I think at, at every audit report I gave you, it gave you that information. You give? Are you saying you gave us mm -hmm. previous I, audits? We have the 2019-2021 audits. You yeah. do? Yeah. When was those provided? Uh, when uh, he first came uh, uh, the board uh, yeah. um President um, Patrick Patrick told me to give those to you. Yeah. All right. The only I'll one I'm not given to is Mr. Money. Can He's you read? The only one. Um, can you, would you please re um, submit that, send it out to all of us again? Okay. Um, we're going to leave this, this workshop thing on there, and I think that we need to talk to Mr. Harris, and we need to see who, who's Gary using South Bend. They might be using somebody that's in Indiana that's a lot closer to us. Um, I know Gary used very much. But... Okay. And, and, and check with um, South Bend as well, but no matter what, we need to move forward because we have a deadline coming. Uh, no, no matter how this goes, we have to get the deadline done. Any other discussion on this? <laughs> Next on the pending item list is uh, pending litigation. Um, I will entertain a motion to have the attorney draft a uh, dismissal. Uh, information has been given 
the documents have been turned over and I will entertain a motion on uh, Mr. Harris to uh, draft a, a letter of uh, dismissal. Make a motion Second. to have Attorney uh, Harris draft the um, letter of dismissal for the pending litigation. I'll second. Okay. Rodney McCormick? Aye. Michael Vincent? Aye. Stacey Benton? Aye. Talani Rain? Aye. And Jacob Mooney? Aye. Okay. And we remove that off the pending items as well. Uh, the last thing is training. Training. We, we discussed that. So I would like for you guys to come up with something by Monday or Tuesday. Let's say the latest of Tuesday. Um, Ms. Hutton's door is open. She will, um, if you come in, you guys can pick what's, what's appropriate for what you believe that you would like to be trained in. Um, like we said, when we went to Orlando, they had commissioners, executive directors, um, I don't know what the other, the other two categories was, and, you, and, and they have the ones that were in the light blue was training for commissioners. You can do two a day. It was two. It was different subjects, you know, and it was. Um, we all need it. We all. We all definitely need it, because um, at some point, every one of us here is going to be the president or chair, and uh, we're going to keep this rotating and learn how to do this and keep this board going. So we need that training. Everything else we already discussed. So um, please, no later than Tuesday, uh, Ms. Hudson will provide y'all with uh, the list of places that's available. Let's, in there. Yeah. And, and let's get that done. Um, uh, I know the Naro, if I'm not mistaken, there's a Naro in March, then there's uh, Nera in April, and then Fada is in Denver uh, in May. And this one that says, uh, I guess Naro, that's in Muncie? Oh, that's the that's our region. That's our state now. The state. The state Naro is going to be in Muncie. So, with that being said, we're going to leave this on the pending item list as well, and that leads us to public comments. Anyone with public comments? Harry none. Commissioner comments. I will entertain a motion. I, I, oh, I'm sorry. I forget some comment. I'm just waiting for someone else if, if they. I'm sorry. Um, we talked at last last meeting with the Michigan City Housing Development Inc. about the email for work orders, the online. And we got one today for a housing authority work order, but they keep going to the mayor's office. Is have we in this? The past week, have we talked to IT about getting that email corrected? Yeah, I sent an email this afternoon to uh, Ms. Nicole, Nicole Michaels, uh, who is over our website board. Okay, and she's going to correct that. Who's going to be the email contact for those online submittals? We're not going to do online submittals. We're going to have them follow the appropriate protocol and call into this building. So IT is removing that from yes, the page? that's what I'm requesting. Okay. Okay. Is that fine with everyone? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we are, like I said, we want to update all, because we have people names that are no longer with us. Um, we're updating that as well. And me and Ms. Hutton is going, we are going to go down to the sanitation department, or that's where Ms. Michaels work, and make sure that this stuff is done tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, in the email I requested a meeting for tomorrow. And, and just the, um, the work order you received, me and you, all three of us received, um, let Ms. Hutton tell you how that worked out and what was going on with that. Um, that was from uh, recently the lady, um, I had to send a letter to this lady because um, she had borders and lodgers in her unit. And I went there personally and told them they had to leave out this unit, which the borders and lodgers were her daughter and her three grandkids, and they were small grandkids. And they had been there a uh, period of time in the residence just got fed up with the noise hmm. and stuff and so they finally told on her that they had been there more than one month hmm. so um, she sent in the work order saying she had no heat and i'm like what you got it on and she was like well i just wanted to make sure i keep it on 75 i'm like yeah that's when the heat comes on keep it on 75 
you know, and then the other thing was the sprayer. So the sprayer is not working, so we're going to replace her sprayer. And, but I asked her why didn't she call the office like she always do, and she said it went to voicemail. But she could have left a message, just like she sent the. Mr. Fossett, anything else? I have, I have other, Go ahead. other points. Do we, as Michigan City Housing Authority, give loans to people? Loans. I, I'll just. I'll just leave that. I'll just leave this out here, and then maybe <laughs> Mrs. Hutton can investigate. But okay, per our, per Horizon Bank, Michigan City Housing Authority has four loans at Horizon Bank with a resident's name, and Michigan City Housing Authority as co-signers. We will enter. We will address that after this meeting. Okay. That yes. Okay. Very good. And also with with banking, do we do online banking with Horizon? Yes, we do online. Now, I want to make sure are Which you, are you referring to maybe possibly the homeowner? We will discuss that after after this meeting because it might be potential problems with that. So we'll okay. discuss that after that meeting. After this meeting, you and Mr. Vincent. Um, okay. And if that's not satisfied, then we'll bring it back to the board. Okay. Okay. Great. And online banking. Should uh, some of our commissioners, especially our chair, have access to the online banking? I, if I, if I don't know anything about online banking. We have online banking, but... Uh, but where you can log on, you can see our accounts on a daily basis. I right. Guess. I have to do the online because because of the fraud, I have to do positive pay. But to online banking, if I do my online banking at home, I can go on there anytime I want and I can see where my account is, ins and outs. If I want to, if I, I know what you're saying. I think both of us, you you from the other side, um, Development Inc., since you your name is on the account, if you want to do it that way, I believe you can have access because your, your name is on the account. You should be able to, you're authorized to do it and I am as well. An administrator has to do it. So Mrs. Hutton being the ED is the administrator for online banking for Michigan City Housing Authority. She's the only one unless she says right. the commissioner can have access to it if, if so needed. Normally yes. it's me okay. and the finance manager. We're okay, and, and then now my question to the board is would we want our, our chairman to have access to that as well. I don't even have access. To I don't see the need. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. I yes. always can give the chairman the bank statements because we get them. That would be the convenience of the chairman not needing to ask if he felt he just needed to check something at for a is, specific reason. Is there anything preventing us from going to bank and asking for our statements myself? Or advice you did sign too as well, right? Yes. Right. Yes. I I don't know. I would have to check with the bank because I okay. don't know what their policies and procedures is. Uh, giving you a can you check in that please? Yes. Yes. Putting putting them on there. Yeah. I, I'm I have I'm a treasurer for another organization, and I have had to put other individuals' names on there to be able to access it to to that extent that I yeah I they're on to. there for that, but I don't know. But they have to go down and provide their ID and have that on record with the bank. Right. So therefore they can go into the bank and ask for a balance or a statement or something and to that extent. I think both of them can because I they signed the paperwork, the bank so payment. Then they, so then so you do have access, I know that then. If that if that those were the steps that you took, yeah. Then yes. you should be able to access it by just going into the bank because they have your information, you sign the form, yeah. and typically they ask for your ID, but maybe okay. they do it a little differently. And it's with Horizon. Right? Me, yes, me personally, I will not do it. I will go to the the, the ED first. It's our day-to-day -day operation. Mm -hmm. If I feel the need that is something is wrong, then I will contact Mr. Vincent and we'll both go and take care of it that way. But that's, that's where I stand with that. Um, yeah. 
I'll, I'll move ahead. on from that with the, another. Um, and these questions I'm asking are, are not meaning to be pointed saying you're doing something wrong. It, it's just questions I'm asking because I don't know and, and I, want, no. I want to understand what we're, where we're at. We have 12 separate checking accounts mm -hmm. and one savings account. Mm -hmm. And why, are, why do we need, or is that part of business that we need 12 separate? There are different accounts for different entities. Purposes? Yeah. Okay. You know. Okay, and what is what is a sweep account? The sweep account is the account that actually your bills be paid out of. Uh, the three there's three main sweep account. It's one for uh, one for here, MCHA. Then it's one for MCHI, and then it's one for Section A. And in those account is. 15000 has to be in that account and that's where the check's clear. And any excess money, your big balances, that's what's in that account. And so three of those are necessary? Yeah, because they're different accounts for different... No, no, yeah. I understand that. Yeah, but the reason, the, the function is that we you only take out 15 thousand it only clears fifteen thousand worth of checks a day. And then after that it'll pull from the other account where your big account is and I think that those accounts also have interest on them. They have they have less interest. Right. But because they're going out because they for the daily activities. There's also a fifty dollar a month fee on each of those accounts to have a sweep account. Mm -hmm. So if we have a need for it, fifty dollars a month is just how many of those doing you that. said three of those? It's three. three. Yeah. It's three. You said housing authority, HDI and section eight? Yeah. And then it's did you try to negotiate with them uh, since they have holding all our, all of our money? No, it was I haven't messed with our bank accounts. They have they were already set up when I got here, so I did not bothered with those bank accounts. I have not. Back to finance right here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Mm -hmm. I will entertain a motion unless there's any other question. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm.